Good evening and welcome to St Andrew's Horton Skull and Darlington Night Prayer. You're most welcome here. Um, we start as usual on a Saturday evening um, with the opening sentence from Deuteronomy 33 verse 27. The eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. So we just stop and reflect for a few seconds. Um, we just reflect on the day that we've had, um, the last 24 hours and um and just think about the things that have happened during that time um the things that we maybe wish to uh, just uh, confess that things haven't gone quite to plan or things that we are disappointed with um as well as off obviously as well you're thinking of your your blessings over the that that short time so just take a few seconds to reflect So we can say together, Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us by your Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, made speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. And we say the glory, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. If you're new to us here at St Andrews, um, I am using a booklet that is called Worship at Home and you could order that or have a look at it on the, um, our website. Um, but I'm also using some parts of the evening, the night prayer from um, the Church of England website, which I usually find on um, an app which you can download, which is called the um, the, the Church of England. Well, it's the Daily Prayer, um, and they, and, and like I say, as I, I go, usually go on there on my app. So the next part of our um, evening is to get um, words from a hymn. Um, it's is a hymn that was written in the 4th century and was translated in the 19th century. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night, tread underfoot our deadly foe that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by his breath, our souls are raised to life from death. So before we um, read our psalm, I'm actually going to um, We'll say the glory and then at the end of the psalm we will also repeat that again so glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit and it as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever amen so reading psalm um, 118 and this um this psalm seems are of thanksgiving to god and reliance on God rather than on our own human strength. So Psalm 118. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his love endures forever. And let those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. And we move to verse 14. The Lord is my strength and my defence. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. And so we, again, we will repeat the glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I'm now going to read Revelation 22. It's just two verses. I have read them um, on, pre on previous weeks. <clears throat> And there is um, there is a refrain at the end of this, um, and some of you you some some you will recognise um, from previous weeks um, from other readings. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign for ever and ever. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. We say together, into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. For you have redeemed me, Lord, God of truth. We say together, alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, Alleluia. Keep me as the apple of your eye. And we say together, hide me under the shadow of your wings. So next I'm going to read our, um, our Gospel reading, um, that's our Mark reading. It's Mark 16 verses 9 to 15. And just before, there is a, again, there's a beginning of a refrain here with, uh, with Alleluia in it. Um, but I just want to sort of say to you um, that in the earliest manuscripts and um, some other ancient witnesses uh, do not have these verses in that we're going to read tonight. So we're actually going to read verses 9 to 15, but there are verses 9 to 20 that don't appear in all of the documents. So, Alleluia, the Lord is risen. Alleluia, as he promised to you. Alleluia, Alleluia. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with her, with him, sorry, and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they didn't believe it. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and reported 
um, it to the, to the rest, but they didn't believe them either. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he'd risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So we repeat, we repeat Alleluia, the Lord is risen. Alleluia, as he promised to you. Alleluia, Alleluia. So we'll move on to our Acts reading. And the day before um, the verses that we are reading in our Acts, the day before those, um, read those readings, um, there were details of thousands of people um, that had become followers, um, followers and believers. And Peter and John had been seized and put into jail. And in our reading, the Sanhedrin um, was a religious legis reg legislative um, body um, of either 20, I think it was 23, or 70 plus um, members, depending on whether it was the great Sanhedrin um, or not. So again, um, we, you could maybe, I, I was going to say equate it to something, um, if it was more local, it would, might be the equivalent of a, um, it was, well, it's a judis, judiciary one. So they were, they were making judgments. I was going to say that it would be like our, our PCC might gather together, but um, we don't necessarily um, deal with the same kind of thing. So our reading, so Acts 4, verse 13 to 21. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realised that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men, they asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that they've performed a notable sign and we can't deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in his name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we can't help speaking about what we've seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Obviously, um, Peter and John were um, apprentices, weren't they? They were apprentices of Jesus. It was the beginning um, of their of their time um, after Jesus had died and they were putting into action the things that they had seen and heard and been taught and again I suppose it's that thing as well isn't it you know we are all um, apprentices um, we are disciples too so you know we we, we do need to respond to that um, and to put into action things that we um that we've heard and seen and read and been taught about so let's pray desire of every nation we bring to you those who are empty and who long to find meaning. Come to them, Lord Jesus.
desire of every nation. We bring to you those who are overlooked and who long to know their worth. Come to them, Lord Jesus. Desire of every nation. We bring to you those who are exploring, but who do not know what they search for. Come to them, Lord Jesus. And tonight we bring to you um, a couple of prayers with a focus um, where we are thanking, um, thanking God for the life of Prince Philip. Um, who is um, who? Who died um, just only yesterday? God of our lives, we give thanks for the life of Prince Philip, for his love for our country, and for his devotion to duty. We entrust him now to your love and mercy, through our Redeemer Jesus Christ. Amen. Merciful God, be close to all who mourn, especially the Queen and all members of the royal family. May they know the hope of your promises and the comfort of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we think and pray for those in our own hearts and minds, those in our own family and friends and, lo and local community. We say, merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. Comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious and holy God, we bring before you those who are ill and are, are in any kind of um, need. And the people listed here are in our hearts and minds and we pray that your hand would be upon their lives. We pray for John Adamson, Leslie Stegner, Douglas Butt, Violet Hardy, Margaret Britton and Karen Storey. And we pray for those that are on our hearts and minds, that are ill or in need. Just take a few seconds to think of your own family and friends. Lord, we pray for the bereaved, for those named in our monthly leaflet this month. We pray for Doris Dot Brown, the, the family of Doris Dot Brown, the friends and family of John Pegg, the friends and family of Elizabeth Nogal, and the friends and family of Dorothy Isabel. Brown. Breathe upon us that our thoughts and words for them may echo the voice of your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our leaflet this month and especially for today we pray for Jay and Gillian. Jay and Gillian Blackburn and we pray for the streets, the people who live in the streets of 
deep day away and do your on a coat court. We pray, Lord, that um, that you will bless them and keep them, keep them safe and protected. We pray your blessing on our local community, Lord. Amen. We pray the prayer for today. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the, lev the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we come to our conclusion. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. May the risen Lord Jesus bless us. May he watch over us and renew us as he renews the whole of creation. May our hearts and lives echo his love. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining us this evening. And, um, and tomorrow evening um, we'll be hopefully here um, at seven o'clock again with night prayer. Um, and tomorrow we should be online um, on YouTube um, at 10 o'clock for our online service. Um, there will be a small section which is um, related to us uh, remembering Prince Philip and um, and remembering his life um, and and bringing um, prayers for his family um, and there will also be uh, it was planned um, some uh, a service where we have looked over the last um, year some of our uh, moments that people would like to see again now. Um, there will be, as I say, there will be a service, but I can't guarantee exactly what is going to be in it. People who've made it do know, um, but um, like I say, you're most welcome to join us. Notices usually start at 10 o'clock and the actual service start at 10 past 10. But you're most welcome to join us at 10 and you can join us with the um, with, with live chat as well um, on, on YouTube. So look out for us um, on the St Andrews page on YouTube um, and subscribe there um, to make sure that you um, will catch them uh, every week. So um, take care in the, the meantime and God bless. Bye bye now.